Hi, I'm Dr. Wilson. I'm a PhD molecular biologist and welcome to another COVID debunking video. This is my second video of the week where I'll be taking a look at what Robert Malone is doing. Robert Malone has spread a massive amount of pseudoscience and misinformation on several different platforms and he continues to do so on the blogging website Substack. Recently he posted a blog post about a paper published in Cell, a really high impact biology journal. This paper was actually really cool. The authors were able to show that after COVID vaccination, the immune response is actually really, really robust, especially compared to COVID infection. They did this by looking at the lymph nodes of patients following vaccination or infection. Lymph nodes are immune organs that are in several places of the body, and they house what we call germinal centers. These germinal centers are where B cells, the cells that produce antibodies, undergo a selection process that allows them to create better and better antibodies. The length that these germinal centers persist is associated with a more robust and broad immune response to whatever antigen is being immunized against. And essentially, these authors found that the germinal centers following COVID vaccination last a really long time, whereas following infection, this germinal center response seemed to be impaired, leading to a much slower immune response and immune training overall. These results basically tell us that COVID vaccines are working really, really well. But how did Robert Malone take these results? What did he highlight, and how did he get it completely wrong? Well, he completely skips over the finding that vaccination induces a much broader antibody response in germinal centers than infection, and skips straight to scaremongering tactics of being freaked out that spike antigen and mRNA are found at later time points in the experiment. So first, he's freaking out about the levels of spike antigen found in the plasma of these individuals following vaccination, while neglecting to tell you that at later time points in the experiment, the level of spike antigen dropped off very, very quickly. He also doesn't tell you that in a SARS-CoV-2 infection, you're going to have a lot more spike antigen in your body. Measuring the amounts of spike protein in the plasma is not going to tell you how much virus you have in your nose, throat, and lungs, for example. So your body is taking on a lot more spike protein in the presence of a SARS-CoV-2 infection, which again is a rapidly replicating virus. It's pretty obvious that there's going to be more antigen in that situation than in a vaccination. At later time points in the experiment, they only detect spike antigen in the germinal centers, which is a good thing, like I explained before. This is where B cells are learning how to produce better antibodies against a specific antigen. And in this case, immune cells have taken up the spike protein from the site of injection, have chopped it up into little pieces, and presented it on their surface. And they have then migrated to the lymph nodes and the germinal centers so that they can present those antigens to B cells so that they can undergo their training. This is exactly what we wanted mRNA vaccines to do. We wanted the mRNA and the lipid nanoparticles to be taken up by dendritic cells, which are immune cells that present antigen to other immune cells like B cells. Similarly with the mRNA from the vaccine, they only detected it in germinal centers in later time points of the experiment. And the number of germinal centers that tested positive for this mRNA decreased over time. The amount of spike antigen and mRNA that we're talking about here in the context of your whole body is absolutely minuscule, and there is no evidence that the presence of these molecules in the germinal centers and lymph nodes for long periods of time is causing any pathology. Again, the takeaway is the complete opposite. The presence of spike antigen in these germinal centers is a good thing. For example, there are several other studies involving influenza vaccines where germinal centers have been found to last for up to nine weeks, indicating that antigen is still present there and those B cells are still learning. Robert Malone also incorrectly states in this substack that vaccination elicited no IgA or IgM responses. IgA and IgM are antibodies that are secreted in your mucosal surfaces, so in your nasopharynx, in your throat, in your intestines are where you'll find IgA antibodies. These are antibodies that are really good at preventing infection, but it's the IgG antibodies that are really good at preventing disease and hospitalization. All you have to do is look at figure 2 to see that, as the paper says, the IgG response following vaccination is much more robust than what we see following infection, but there are also IgA and IgM responses. They are not absent, as Robert Malone claims in his substack. 
And we know that after vaccination, if someone were to be infected or boosted, your immune system would be able to recall and create more IgA antibodies in your mucosal surfaces for a certain period of time. This blog post is vague fear-mongering at its finest, but apparently that's all Robert Malone is doing these days. He's just trying to scare people and get the clicks so that he can have the recognition he never had as a graduate student or as an MD. If you want to listen to a real immunologist talk about germinal centers and get the background you would need in order to interpret this paper better than Malone did, then I highly recommend you check out this episode of the Immune Podcast. It'll teach you far more than you ever wanted to know or that you can even learn in one listen about the immune system and germinal centers. So I just wanted to point out that after filming for this video, I found this brand new pre-proof of a paper that's going to be published in Nature from the Elabitty Lab. The questions being asked in this paper were very similar to the ones being asked in the cell paper, and they found practically identical results. They essentially found that COVID vaccination induces a really robust germinal center response, which leads to production of very potent antibodies against SARS-CoV-2. These results further reinforce the conclusion that COVID vaccination is inducing a really, really potent immune response against SARS-CoV-2. And these are all results that Robert Malone is flat out ignoring. We have had over 10 billion doses of COVID vaccine given to people all over the world at this point. And there has been practically no evidence that the spike antigen in the context of COVID vaccines is toxic in the same way that it is in COVID infection. So until Robert Malone can actually offer a lot of evidence to overturn this safety profile of the spike antigen in the context of COVID vaccines, he is just making baseless claims in order to scare his audience. Well, that's going to do it for this look at Robert Maloney's latest baloney. History will not remember him kindly. As always, please check out the links in the description. They contain all of the science and all of the information I talk about in this video, so you can check them out for yourself. And if you enjoyed this video, don't forget to subscribe so you can catch me in the next video where I'll be debunking some more funky stuff. See you then.